Last week I made a tutorial on how to animate that Peanuts dance from the Christmas special. And I got a comment saying that they were glad to see me using reference because they think that reference is a form of cheating in animation. So I'm going to talk about if you should be using reference when you're learning to animate and if it's cheating or not on today's episode of the Expat Animator. So let's go ahead and take a look at the file that I was using last week. And all I'm really going to take a look at are the shapes layers that I used, that I actually traced on top of the animation. And as you can see here, there's 13 different drawings. And I just traced the basic shapes of like the head, the feet, the hands, and where the torso and shoulders would go. And if I use my... Uh, right arrow key on the keyboard I can flip through these and you can kind of see the animation working and how the body moves as I flip through these drawings now the other thing I want to show you is if I pull up this roughs drawing on top of the shapes and you notice I don't have my head drawn at this stage but uh, and I went over this last week but you can see that I'm using the shapes layer to help me draw my own character uh, just but I'm kind of stealing the movement from that animation and if I weren't using that as reference it would be very hard for me to get the exact animation especially without looking at at something it would almost be impossible so you're gonna need to do reference if you want to copy or mimic some kind of movement from another character so that's one reason I don't really believe that uh, this is stealing or cheating in this instance because we're using it to learn how they got the movement for their character and then we're applying it to our own characters uh, that we've designed so let's take roughs down real quick and let's just concentrate on the shapes here and what I want to take a look at I'm going to zoom in what I want to take a look at is a few things I want to look at the shoulders here so this line on the shoulder, connecting the shoulders, you can see that this shoulder here, his his right shoulder, is very high when we start this animation. And let's watch this shoulder as we go through. So it's high, it's still high. I mean, now we're on the fourth drawing and it's still high. And then you see that it drops equal on the fifth drawing to the other shoulder. And then you see the other shoulder start to rise and then that right shoulder is dropping and now that right shoulder is really low I mean I mean look at right here how low that shoulder is and that's only seven drawings apart from the original drawing so in seven drawings we've gone from a very high shoulder to a very low shoulder and that's helping the character look like he's dancing is, is movements like that and juxtaposition of positions uh, from one drawing to the next. So let's keep flipping through here. And you can see that it's still low, still low, still low. And now we go back to the equal point with the other shoulder. And it's still equal. And then on this last drawing, it goes back up to the starting point. So it, it's high again. So we've got the shoulder in a matter of in a matter of 13 drawings going from high to medium to low back to medium and back up to high. So by just studying this one shoulder, I get an idea of how this character is dancing by studying not necessarily the original drawings, but the shapes, the basic breakdown of the shapes of the body. So let's do this again, but this time let's look at the head. So the head's gonna start here, kind of profile looking to his left and as we flip through that head's not really moving that much until here on the fifth drawing and here the head goes really high and the nose goes up in the center and then it, it quickly rotates to the other side so and now it's back to the profile but on the other side pointing the other way from where we started so the head is doing basically a couple of things in these 13 drawings. It's starting on one profile, and then it's going up 
and then it's going back down to the other profile. And you can see here, he's going from the right side back to center and then back to the position where he started. So we are not going from here to here. We're going from here, here, here. So there's that transition from side to side. And it's really only one or two drawings. So we've got the profile here. We've got a semi quarter turn rotation where he's starting to go up and the head starting to rotate in between the profile and the center. So that's what this drawing is. And then we've got that center head with the nose pointing up and in the center. And then we're going back straight into the original profile shot on the original side. So things like this is what I like to do when I'm breaking down how someone animated something that they've done. And I've been doing this for years and, you know, 20 years ago, before you could find a lot of things on the internet, the way I had to do this was I would take a DVD and I would use my DVD player and I would just do the frame by frame button on the remote and kind of see how movements would go from frame to frame. And that was a slower process than what we can do today with just, you know, a quick time video or something on your computer where you can flip through it. But that's how I learned to animate uh, initially was looking at other either an other animations and see how the movement was made. Or I would even do live action footage either from a movie or stuff that I shot. And if I shot my own footage, which I've done plenty of times to see how a movement gets worked out then I could just import that from my camera and then I'd have that as reference on my computer where I could flip through it frame by frame uh, and, and study the movement. So, yes, I did copy it or steal it in a way, but I added my own artwork and my own characters to the movement. So I wasn't really stealing the artwork, I was stealing the movement and learning how the animation happened. And is that cheating? You know, in my opinion, no, because you have to learn how movements work because you're not born. You don't know this innately. Maybe some people do, but I don't. And I don't think the majority of people do. So you have to study movements to learn how to do the movements. You know, um, it's the same thing with drawing. You know, I could draw to an extent uh, just by natural ability, but I got better at drawing by looking at other people's drawings and mimicking those not necessarily tracing them but breaking down the drawing and copying their style and then eventually come up with your own drawing style and you do that by looking at other people's work so it's the same thing here at animation i'm looking at other animations to learn how movements are created and what makes good smooth movement and in this case what makes a funny looking dance so Let's take one more quick look at, uh, let's just take this foot here, for instance. And you can kind of see, you know, the heel flares out and up from the first drawing to the second drawing. And then it goes back, right back down. So it's doing this quick movement in three different drawings. And then it's kind of, then the heel is going inwards. So we've got the heel, let me grab my... Let me just draw this real quick here. Let me do this on another layer. Let's do this. Let's duplicate layer to blank drawings. And I'm going to draw on this. I'll just call this red. Let's draw on this layer here. So I've got the heel is right about here. Then the heel goes here. And it comes back to where we were. Then it comes way over here. Then it shoots way back over here again. I mean, like, I wouldn't do this normally. I It's something that... I'm learning by shooting the heel back and forth like this, you're getting this fun animation of a dance. Then we come back here. Then it's back here somewhere. Back here to the center. Kind of doesn't really move here too much. Then it shoots way over here behind the other foot. Then it shoots back here. I mean, this heel is going all over the place. Then it's back over here at the high point. So, and then it's probably back in here somewhere. So, if we were to just take the shapes layer down and just look at this red dot 
bouncing around. Let's take a look at this. I mean, it's it's kind of going all over the place. I mean, it's going here, 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 you know, back and forth, back and forth. So by looking at that and paying attention to that, we can kind of notice there's a lot of movement going on with that foot. I and mean, that's just one foot. And if we did the same thing with the other foot, you'd see there's probably a lot of movement with that foot as well. So by breaking down things like his shoulders, the head movement, uh, the, the heel or the feet in this instance, the hands, uh, the waist, that's another uh, point to watch for, you can kind of learn how certain animations move. And hopefully if you study these enough and you animate things enough, you'll start to be able to do this on your own. And you might even come up with your own take on these things where, you know, when the heel flares out way over here, maybe you think that's too much and you'll start bringing yours, you know, down a little bit. And, you know, it's, oh, that's too high for me. I, you know, that's not my style. But in my opinion, there's nothing wrong with studying animations or videos to learn movements because if you've got a better way to do it let me know in the comments uh, otherwise you know you're going to get frustrated trying to animate things where you're trying to figure out timing and movements and placements uh, especially with body parts and you know if you're animating like a leaf blowing in the wind that's a little bit less complicated than something with you know four limbs and a head and torso and all these things that have to move together and stay connected while this character is dancing. So while we don't necessarily want to just blatantly rip off, you know, another person's animation by tracing on it, you know, rotoscoping it basically and claiming it as your own, doing something like this is a good exercise to learn movements. And just like now I can draw without looking at another image or drawing to draw. I can just draw out of my head now. Because I practiced, you know, for a lot of years looking at other drawings and looking at photographs and learning how to draw. And once you understand you know, the basics of how to draw something, you can draw your own thing and add your own style or creativity to, to that drawing. And, and people will start to recognize that as your own style. And I think the same thing is could be said for animation. The more you're going to animate things, the more you'll get your own animation style. And the only real way to get there is by looking at other people's animations and studying videos to learn how things move. So if you're worried about cheating when trying to learn how to animate, don't worry about it. Just start learning and eventually you'll come up with your own style and be able to make your own animations that will be your own. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you think that this is a form of cheating or stealing? And if so, how did you learn how to animate without using reference? So that's it for today. My name is Patrick Davidson. This has been another episode of the Expat Animator. Thanks for joining me today, and I hope to see you next time. If you found today's video helpful, you might like some of my animation classes over at Skillshare.com. I'll put the link in the description below.